Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. So honor is given to the parent, and honor is given to the, to the master. Been changing Bibles, guaranteed. We can't have a master servant that don't call Jesus the Lord. If then I be your father, God speaking, where is my honor? And if I be your master, well, pretty soon they're going to call Jesus Rabbi, they're going to call Jesus Master, they're going to call Jesus the Lord. He's God. Jesus will say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Where is my fear? So there's what definition of fear. It's to honor. The son honor his father to serve in his master. Where is my honor? Where is my fear? Fear is an honor. There are things I don't do because he's God. He's my father. Say if the Lord of hosts unto you. Talking to the priest. O priest that despise my name. So he's a father without honor. He's a master without fear. And his name has been despised. You sure don't hear that in the Baptist church when they run over that, that storehouse. I'm bringing you tithes to the storehouse, looking at the storehouse of God, fill it all up! They forget Malachi chapter 1. You, you don't give me no honor, you don't fear me, and you despise my name. And that is the characteristic of today's Lives to See in Church Age. You offer polluted bread upon my altar. Talk about pollution. Ye say, and we talked about last time, God is going to use what they say. Wherein have we polluted thee? Oh, polluted bread? What are you talking about? How? Oh. In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible, and that's despised. You despise my name. You hate my altar. You hate everything involved in it. And you gotta sit here and make this brand every week. I make this brand. I put it out. Uh. Now come on, bring your tithes and bring your offerings here and watch God bring the blessing. Hallelujah, glory to God. And don't think every pastor, oh, we just got such great treats, great people, and all that wonderful, hallelujah. No, oh, no, 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 no. You're a pain in the butt. You're an aggravation. More people sh don't come to church service because of, cause of a ball game or te television show or. And if you offer the blind for a sacrifice, which the law forbade, the law was you to look at that offering and make sure that offering was healthy. Make sure that offering was proper. Is it not evil? Yes, it is. If you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Yes, it is. Now notice, 
as we reach up to the great tithing chapter. There is nothing about coins, dollars, silver, gold. It's been animal. Your George Washington may have eyes, but he can't see. He may have ears, but he can't hear. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the offerings of the people, and we're talking about live animals. He goes on to say, offer it now unto thy governor. Give it to the ruler. How about if you were to get your Donald Trump back in the White House? You offer to Donald Trump what you offer to God on Sunday mornings. You think me well pleased? Will he be pleased with thee? So evidently the context of Malachi chapter 1 is the animals being brought are blind, they're lame, they're sick. They're the worst. They're the ones you can't sell. We'll give them to God. Or set thy person, saith the Lord of hosts. And now I pray thee, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. Now, God speaking. This has been your means, the poor, the blind, the maimed, the sick. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? I mean, besides the fact this for the Jew, that's what we're talking about. Chapter 1, verse 1. I mean, come on, think about it. Here is the temple. And is it not pathetic the animals that they're bringing? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors or not? The temple. For no reason you just shut the, shut the house up. Neither do you kindle a fire on my altar for nothing. When you come to that altar, the fire is lit for a reason. The doors are open for a reason. And what's God say about that? It's not ready in your Baptist church when he wants you to give an offering. I have no pleasure in you. In the last of seeing churches, God says, you make me vomit. Oh, come on, we, we, we went to the amusement park land. Oh, we rode all the rides. Was it fun? Oh, we vomited it all the time. Man, we filled those cars with vomit. God says to the lad the singing church, your, your worship, your, your, you make me sick. And we've run it back to Malachi. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Now, let's look at what it is. Now, if your typical Baptist preacher is going to use this, for a message on a Sunday morning, 
if you don't bring the offering with the right heart, you know, you know, if it's, it's, you know, you, you, you had fun all, all week long, you had a dollar left over, you put that dollar in the plate, God's not going to, that's not a dollar. You realize what these offerings were? They were sin offerings, they were peace offerings, they were trespass offerings. And if God didn't accept your offering, the Old Testament says is your, your condition and fellowship with God was still broken. That'd be like going to the cross of Jesus with your arm around a prostitute. Oh Lord, I'm sorry for these women, and then you know, walk away and be with the prostitute. For from the rising of the sun east unto the going down to the same west. My name shall be great among the Gentiles. Church age. You guys don't want to honor my name? I'll turn over to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are in today for the very fact is a stumbling block to Israel. Not that God's all finished with it with Israel. Hey, those those stupid dogs that you ate. Well, look at them praise me. Look at them loving me. And every place incense shall be offered unto my name. Prayer. Incense is a type of prayer. A pure offering. Well, they've been offering what God's told us out of God's mouth, what they're doing. Impure. For my name shall be great among the heathen, Gentiles, save the Lord of hosts. But ye, Israel, has profaned it, in that ye say the table of the Lord polluted, and the fruit thereof. Even his meat <coughs> is contemptible, hated. I got to a point, they don't even want to do the job. He say also, Behold the weariness of it. I ain't gonna take this animal, we're gonna kill this animal, we're gonna take the blood, put it here, gotta put the blood over here, gotta do that, gotta put this on, gotta take this off, gotta watch like this, gotta go through, oh, oh man. And that's what some religions service on Sunday morning. And we gotta go up there, walk up there, and we say this, we read a couple things in the Bible, sing a couple songs and all that, give a couple of this, and whatever. And if you want a great example of that, I know you go to a Catholic church. <laughs> I've been in Baptist churches like that. I've been in Baptist church with a free. Oh, man. This guy ever going to shut up? And on and on and on. You know, he, he preaches that 30 minute, and that's just an introduction. Oh, Lord. Really? He has snuffed at it. What is that? Yeah, it, 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 you, you know that expression today. With people who are, you know, you know, those people. I don't have anything to do with those people. That's what they have to do with the offering of God. Yeah. Save the Lord of both. So God's saying it. He's not lying. He had brought that which is torn, lame, and sick.
That's the animal. So the Baptist preacher will say, you know, to bring that man, bring that man, bring that man from the world of sin. The lost are not an offering unto God because he's not going to accept it. Shall I accept this of your hand? Shall I take the worst you got? Say the Lord. But cursed be the deceiver, uh -oh, which has in his flock a male and vow it. Whatever reason, you know, I'm going to give this to God. When it comes up to this beast, this animal's name. And sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupt thing. Such as torn, lame, sick, half dying, blind. For I am the great king, there's Jesus again. Save the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. That dreadful means. As far as the church age today, well, except for the last seen church age, is that name is honored, that name is reverence, that name is a holy name. Uh, I had a, when I worked in one place, and they knew I was a Christian, I was out, I was an evangelist, and they knew how much I knew the Lord and all that, and they would say the names Lord and they, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, we didn't know you were here. And they're not even saved. And today the Jew will write G D. You know, we reverence the name because we don't want him to spell it and all that. You don't care. You really care when you heard a Gentile, oh, come to you with the name of Jesus, your Messiah. You would go search the scriptures and see if that Gentile is telling you the truth. But you don't. Now we don't listen to the note the Gospels. We don't follow the New Testament a lot. Why not? Now, we got another part here. It says, You have despised my name, verse 6. And they say, Where have we despised your name, verse 6? In verse 7, you say the table of the Lord is contemptible. Hate it. And you got between the Gentiles and the Jews. And you got contemptible in verse 1, I mean, chapter 1, verse 12. And you're the torn, the lame, the sick, the blind. So when we come back to the chapter, verse 2, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, where have you loved us? Was not Esau that Jacob thy brother, saith the Lord, I have loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. Then he goes in about Esau. And what he's done is, before he goes into the kill, he brings up, here's his relationship between Esau and Jacob. Oh, you know, we're the loved ones, and he's the hated one. And God turns around and says, Well, you have that same hatred you have towards me. When you bring that blind, the maimed, the sick, And, and what they're doing, what they do today is, God, how dare you hate somebody? Oh, you hate me. Well, how do you, how do we hate you? Look what you bring. How you bring it.
And the whole atmosphere with the Gentiles, you see with Peter and you see it with Jonah. Ew. It's funny how Peter sees that sheep three times. And right away he knows. Well, I don't eat anything that's unclean. And boom, there are three men from Cornelius' camp. Jonah says, I don't want to go to Nineveh because I know you're merciful, gracious, and loving, and long-suffering. And if I go over there and preach to those dogs, Lord, you're going to repent. How does Jonah know that? He knows the history of God in the wilderness with the nation of Israel. How Moses was stand again. And he already knows that his people are not living so well. And the fact is, it's not the question that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. We already saw that's wrong. It's the very fact is that the Christian hates God and loves the sin. How do you say that? Where were you Sunday? Where was the seat, the Sunday evening service that your pastor today? Oh, you know, uh, things have changed since COVID. Well, that's not what you were preaching before COVID. So COVID is more powerful than God. Well, you know, the government told us we have to shut down six feet and all that, get the shot. But you preached before on Peter and John that the government tells us to do it, God tells us to do it, we're going to stick with God. No, you won't. Long before COVID, long, I was even back in Connecticut, my first wife was living. Well, we'll see you at Hayward's next week. You're not coming here Wednesday night? No, you won't believe what's on television. we got to see the semifinal. Uh, this is how old. You can't set the VCR? No, oh, we got to see it live. After that, there was one time. Oh, no. You, this is the churches. We saw Janet's booby. At the halftime show of the of the of the football, I think it's what were you doing watching football on Sunday night? Did you see Janet's booby? And that happened. Whatever the thing and the wardrobe came off, and there was her booby. And how many churches had no Sunday service, but they had a booby show? So you know how the churches conquered that one? Next Super Bowl. We're going to have a service. We're not. No. Well, at the halftime, we'll just turn it off and we'll have biscuits and uh, fried chicken. And we'll, we'll turn, when the game's back on, we'll turn it back on. Sunday night. Sunday night. Throw, throw, throw. And God's up in heaven. Wait a minute. Is it this Sunday, God's day? Your checkbook will tell you who you love. I've heard people tell me when the plate comes around. Yep, and they're putting the money in the plate or check where it is. I'll get a receipt and claim for IRS. Really?
Well, when we go to church, we'll go to church. Yeah, you give God the worst day. So what you do is you hate God and you love the sin. And then you turn around and you expect God to bless you. You expect God to honor you. You expect everything to be hunky-dory, right, and wonderful. While you're changing the Bible to say something it doesn't say. Israel's condition, the priest's condition, the people's condition at the temple is it's not good enough for me, God will take it. The leftover. Son, those sheep we couldn't sell last week? Yeah. We'll bring him to Jerusalem. We'll dump him off on God. And you wonder why this country is in the spiritual condition it is today. What what Israel was, the spiritual condition they were when they they had the Messiah there, they had the scriptures fulfilled. And they crucified. And they had the nerve to tell Pilate, we don't be under bondage. Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, the Medes and the Persians, Rome itself. What do you mean? Your whole beings you've been. You're only lying to yourself. 